We all go along through life taking an ungodly amount of things for granted. We do not truly question things out of sheer curiosity and desire to understand. That is not to say that we are not very curious creatures. If we weren't, we wouldn't have made it to where we are now as a species. It is those of us who are curious enough to spend a lot of time and effort, sometimes even a lifetime, trying to answer the questions they didn't have an answer for that gave us the knowledge about this world that we have. Sometimes even to the point where some of them literally died virgins. But yet, we still encounter a lot of things that we do not understand on a daily and never think about. Our brains are wired in a way that make us ignore things that we already know work and or are predictable. In order for that to happen, we have to massively prioritize and disregard nearly everything that could be questioned. Why is the ocean blue? Why are whales so fucking huge? Why do we have five fingers? How the fuck did humanity build something as complex as civilization and how do we go every single day without it collapsing? No, I mean seriously, how did all this happen? Because I have absolutely no fucking clue how the economy, the government and chicken prices work. And I'm not sure I've ever met anyone who does. Who decides chicken prices? Is there a federation or a board that sits on a round table made of chicken bones every week and they agree on a rando price? Or is it all one man chicken hybrid that evolved beyond both species and can somehow download the most market fit chicken price for the week from the ether? None of us know how the tiniest portion of the world actually works. And as long as those things are predictable and they still work, you won't bother with trying to come up with an explanation for why it is the way that it is and how it actually does function. And there's a good reasoning behind that. If you did, you would spend your entire lifetime questioning everything around you all the time until it became the only thing you ever did because there is an infinite amount of facts, an infinite amount of things worth questioning all around us and each question begets a million other and of our ancestors who actually did that, they either starved to death trying to do so or ventured too far looking for some weird mushroom that makes them see God and smell colors and were subsequently eaten by a bear or more to death by a honey badger while high. Seriously, those things do not fear God. In short, we are biologically wired to ignore the world if it doesn't serve us in some kind of way. This built-in approach to the world can help us understand the way our perception was shaped, how it works, how we actually filter reality can be boiled down quite simplistically. We see reality in the way that it can be useful to us. Human perception is the process of breaking down reality into how we can use it, which is very counterintuitive to try and perceive by design. After all, to both of us, what we see right now, as far as we can tell, is reality and if it isn't, it sure as hell does feel like it. We are a tool using and tool recognizing creature. That is how we see the world. We see chairs and doors and cars because each of those serves a purpose. For example, it would feel extremely counterintuitive to see a door described as a rectangular wooden frame thing perpendicular to the ground. Even if it is objectively true, you classify the code and simplify the world to make it fit its utility in relationship to us. And if you're asked, what's reality? An automatic, easy answer comes to mind. Reality is what I see, touch, smell, hear, and feel. So we take the easy assumption that reality is equal and limited to our subjective perception of physical reality, which is quite an efficient way of viewing the world and helps us navigate it with as little friction as possible. And all that happened with no coincidence since evolution spent a good 4 billion years on that problem. But if you were to be pushed on the question of reality a little more, it wouldn't take much time and effort to make you grind into a monumental halt, because to us, there is nothing outside of our perception. It is all we've ever known. We, inherently and despite our greatest efforts, lack the ability to imagine what could be, what the nature of reality is without our perception. But we can at least try by getting rid of our biggest assumption about it, which, as we've talked about, is its object and tool-based nature. We see books, desks, glasses, screens, walls, and 
as an extension of that, schools, universities, hospitals, we see society, the government, political parties, and to us, these things are very obvious, distinct objects in the world. Because the government is as much an object as anything else. You can think of it as a more abstract, far larger sized tool, but make no mistake, it is still a tool which serves as proof that we can conceptualize tools at quite a complex and abstract degree. We cannot help but codify the world that way. To us, the object nature of reality is self-evident, primed deeply, wired inherently into our perception of the world. To the point where that is nearly all we ever see. But if you got rid of humans, like through the 8 billion of us in a gigantic ditch and slowly cooked us to death, with only our ashes left as proof of our prior existence, what would reality become? Are pencils still a thing? How about buildings? Roads? Cities? What about hot and cold? Up and down? What is reality in the absence of human perception? First off, there would be no actual separation between whatever device you're using now and the air that surrounds it. On an atomic level, there are no objects. There is no clear delimitation where your device ends and the air starts. Nearly all reality is empty space. Your computer is made mostly of emptiness. And the act of perceiving it as a physical object is only but a sensorial illusion. That is true reality. Or at least it is as best as we can understand it. Which is a bit of a mindfuck, I know. But it doesn't really stop there. There are so many building blocks of human perception that are completely illusionary that taken each of them apart would scrape us down into embarrassing levels of self-delusion. Whether you're aware of this or not, in the latest years, the consensus in the neuroscience community is that free will is an illusion. And the way they can tell this is through fMRI brain scans. If you observe blood flow to all parts of the brain and ask a person to make a choice, you can observe the brain making the decision by monitoring where the blood goes before that decision manifests itself in our conscious awareness. Somehow, we've developed the self-deceiving ability to think we are masters of our choices. But as if that wasn't enough, from a physics point of view, our atoms decided every motion we'd make long before we ever came to be. The laws of physics predetermine and predict motion. You can calculate what physical shit we do if you are given its data. And since we are atoms, it means we cannot make our atoms change course. Our atoms don't consult us before they do their thing. They don't just stop mid-motion to ask for consent. All atoms that make us cannot be meddled with through conscious thought or action. Bear in mind, this is only a few of the innumerable things that come together to form our very biased perception of the world. As of now, we've only talked about how human perception is shaped and how it filters reality, but even within our own species, perception is widely different from person to person. We do not see the same world, like, at all. If you doubt this, just ask yourself. Why do we so frequently disagree with one another? Why do we fight? Or to be more exact, over what do we ever fight exactly? Our ability to make arguments over the smallest of things will never cease to amaze me. And to be honest, I wouldn't have it any other way. Human conflict entertains the shit out of us. We have waged war for as long as tribes existed. And there is a simple explanation to that. Tribalism. We've evolved to have a deep sense of belonging to a group of people and a deep sense of hostility for outsiders and other tribes because other tribes were historically competition for food and land, meaning it is just another mechanism for survival. A tribe that survives gets to spread more of itself and ensure the survival of its offspring. And the most aggressive tribes were more likely to survive which I guess can explain our very violent war-waging past since we've basically evolved to have war-like tendencies. And good luck try to deny that since the modern world is basically built on tribalism. Although it has taken another more adaptive shape, it is nevertheless the building block upon which civilization rests upon. It both is a functional part of society since it integrates human nature in a semi-peaceful, functional manner and 
is also in a big way the biggest threat to humanity. In other words, I'm describing the fight for ideologies. Different groups of people come to a different ideology for their group, then they fight to either spread their ideologies or preserve them. Think of Twitter. What are those weird fucks doing all day, do you think? Are they trying to make the world a better place and be good people? Or are they trying to fight against enemy tribes that hold a different set of opposing ideologies that threaten the existence of theirs? If in doubt, ask yourself. Historically, which of those is more likely to be true? We're not cognitively different in any way from the humans of 10,000 years ago. Our nature is just the same. We have just adapted tribalism in a way as it can be part of civilization. But it is still very much there. And in many countries in our world today, ideologies are tearing societies apart. If you think I'm exaggerating, a very well documented clash of ideologies nearly ended the human race just 60 years ago. Yes, the Cold War, capitalism and communism, two ideological thoughts of how the world ought to be like, nearly brought it to its untimely doom. Since ideologies hold so much importance, let us explain what an ideology is, but only as it relates to our topic of perception. Ideologies are each and every person's own subjective way of thinking what the world and humanity's relationship to it ought to be like. And for an ideology to manifest, there must be the source concept of subjective perception of the world. You have to be biased in order to be ideological. To simplify it, if we all agreed on how the world should be, ideologies wouldn't be a thing because we inherently associate them with our unique sense of identity and as an extension, that of our group. If we weren't tribal and biased, there would be only one common ideal and we wouldn't need a name for it. We would all just collectively try to make the world better and it would be self-evident and common between all. But since that isn't the case, that means that each and every one of us sees a different version of reality and if we truly saw only one reality, then the fuck are we disagreeing over? Even when fed the exact same information and growing up in the same house with the same parents, siblings can end up with complete opposing worldviews. Why? Would you have at least one thing you disagree with with every person you've ever known in your life? What are you disagreeing over? Nearly all people with views they spent a good amount of time crafting think and believe they are right. So, if left to ourselves, why do we come up to different conclusions? And the answer is that you do not see the same world. Nearly no one ever did or does. To push this even further, even you yourself do not always see the same reality. Your perception can be completely different depending on something as trivial as your mood or your immediate circumstances, where you live and so on. In a way, you create your own reality. Your knowledge about the world and opinions have also changed dramatically throughout your life. We learn, grow and change through experience and through that change, we switch our perception of the world. Reality then becomes a mirror of our ever-changing and fluctuant selves. Apply that as the norm for human experience and you come to the inevitable conclusion that there hasn't been a single person throughout history that has ever truly seen reality or has been completely right or wrong. Even the people you most idealize and hold high in your esteem are flawed in a vast amount of ways and are heavily biased in their worldview. No matter how objective they may seem, despite all this, we all hold the very firm belief in our heart that we are seeing reality at all times, even when I know that I do not actually, I still do not believe it, feel it. Something deep and primal in my psyche and inherent to my being tells me that I somehow hold the objective view of the world, and you watching this probably think the same, because you're special, aren't you? You're different, as am I, and as is every person that ever lived. The way we can explain this is by understanding that we weren't biologically wired to see reality. Evolution didn't plan for you to be a novel objective smart edgelord capable of seeing the true universe through its slightly less chimpy eyes. Because evolution doesn't give a fuck about reality. Evolution only cares about one thing, survival. And it will use whatever tool it has to achieve that result. Each person 
sees reality in the way it most likely will bring about its survival. Another reason we don't see reality is because it would have made our brain the size of a large building, at the very least. Evolution shaped us in the way most fit for us to survive and survival values efficiency above all. By that I mean the most efficient way to expand energy for survival. As an example, we only see color because we eat fruit and if we didn't, we'd be colorblind since the need for it is gone. We also only see a tiny fraction of all existing light and if you want to push things to the extreme, we wouldn't have ever known the existence of dark matter if we couldn't calculate its effect. So even as a starting point, we all somehow had the same baseline subjective experience, we would not truly see objective reality since it's beyond our senses. But even if we disregard all that and only looked at the tiny portion of reality in which humanity lives in, it wouldn't change much since we, in the most real sense, do not see the same world. Our experience and view of this thing we call life is widely different from person to another. We are each in our own isolated version of reality. No one will ever truly understand you, nor will you ever truly understand anyone else. We are all alone in this world, and we all die alone. Yes, I could have left that part out and still could have made my point. But I'd rather you'd be just as miserable as I am knowing this. What makes our perception of reality so widely different and unique to each of us is primarily our genes. They determine most of who you are and, as a consequence, greatly affect your perception. Genes determine your personality traits, your intelligence, and all sorts of biochemical, hormonal, and neurological signatures that, by the end, create a highly distinct individual that absorbs and reacts to the world in a way that their specific body sees most fit. To simplify this, Think of your body as a filter that takes outside world stimuli and information inward and gives the appropriate emotional response that aligns with your specific biological making. But it doesn't stop there. Your body is greatly influenced by your environment and can greatly shift you in one way or another. Although the biggest shifts from our nature are usually negative, meaning the further we stray from our nature, the more likely we've been changed in a negative way. How your parents raised you how well did they attend to you? How much did they traumatize you? And how specifically did they do so? The relationships you've built throughout your life and how you were treated by others, the memories you have, the type of information you marinated in, the information you expose yourself to. At some point, you accumulate enough of those specific and very particular things to make you an extremely subjective being with their unique filtering system of reality. Your body serves that purpose quite well because the world must be catered to your specific self and as such, you have never seen reality. No one ever has. We all experience an illusion that feigns reality. It has always been only an extremely narrow, simplistic, biased version of the real thing. We are an ant on a leaf trying to make sense of the trees forgetting the forest in which it grew and is part of the mountain on which it lays. As such, the only true outward intention you ought to have is humility. Humility unburdens you from the weight of having to be always right, of having to always know and understand. And although we might try to question the trueness of reality itself when looking at it this way, we must not forget that we still have enough overlap in our perception of reality between us to have created civilization and world order. To go along with that line of thought, we could ask... What is the secret ingredient to create a somewhat peaceful functional society? Yes, exactly. An overlap in perception. If there is not enough of a cohesive view of the world amongst the members of any large group of people, the group will inevitably collapse into itself. And if there wasn't an objective reality outside of our experience, then we would not have ever agreed to the point of our allowing something as complex as civilization to occur. To me, there is no greater proof of that objective reality. Otherwise, why don't some of us just wake up and decide to burn our world to the ground? Why do we all partake in this thing, this system? Why do we agree on human rights? Or at least enough to have made the law and to abide by it? Why do we work for money? These things do not exist in reality. They are constructs, but those constructs become real because enough of us believe in them abide by them. It is our collective agreement on these things that make them real. 
So the next step we should ask ourselves should be, will it ever come a time in which we would collectively see one reality? And if it could be true, how would we achieve that? I have some ideas and potential answers in mind, but I think I've rambled enough on this topic for now. So see ya.